I've got here a Spectrum DXS radio. And I know this isn't a mainstream, high quality or high end radio, but a lot of you have this. A lot of the people that I uh, uh, work with on some of the Facebook groups often get these in the uh, ready to fly uh, Aero Scouts and some of the other planes. And it's actually not a bad radio for as far as ready to fly radios go. It's a seven channel radio. You can do quite a bit with it if you set up the modes right. Uh, I wanted to do a couple of you know quick segments on uh, some of the things you can do with this, and um, maybe show some mods. Uh, you know, if somebody you get this with your ready to fly planes, and you want to be able to use it on a couple of planes for a little while, uh, it can certainly do it. You can actually set this up for several different model profiles, <clears throat> you know, and be able to do gear and flaps and reverse thrust and you know, and quite a number of things. First thing I want to show you in this first little quick video is how to update it with the USB programmer. When I first picked this up, a good friend of mine, Tim from uh, Midwest RC, I'll put a, a link to his uh, YouTube channel down below, so check that out. He got a hold of one of these radios and he wasn't going to use it, so I asked him about it and he gave me a swing and deal on it because I wanted to get one and play around with it and check it out uh, and perhaps share some content with you guys so you could uh, take full advantage of the capabilities of this radio. To get the multiple profiles, you have to have it updated. And everywhere I looked on, got, I got on uh, Amazon, I got on the Horizon Hobby, the little adapter cable that you need for this to be able to plug it into the USB programmer is is just, is backward everywhere. So I'm like, well, what the heck? So I was able to reverse engineer what it was, and it's really just a couple of jumper wires to get out of the plug in the back of this into your USB programmer. Let me show you what I found out. Uh, here's the USB programmer, the uh, SPMA3065. I've used this in a number of my videos on, uh, you know, in, anytime you need to update any of your uh, receivers, radios, any of the spectrum equipment, you're gonna need this USB updater. Let me uh, put the gimbal protectors on so I can flip this over. For some reason, in this radio, they did not make the right size connector in here. They got this oddball size uh, connector. So a standard, this standard USB uh, to servo connector plug won't go in it. So let me pop this out real quick. Here's the little adapter I made. Uh, turns out that little adapter they want you to buy for like nine bucks or whatever it is, is just a jumper wire. Uh, it just goes straight through. So there's no electronics to it or anything. This in here is just a standard servo connector. So this can plug in to, a, to the USB adapter. This is a standard servo type adapter. In the radio, it's different spacing. The pin diameters are the same. So what I did is I had, a, I just got two of these and I soldered them to the end of these other wires. But I needed to do that so I could get them the right spacing because if you just try to plug in this triple here or a, or a four pin because this is a four pin plug down here I'll zoom in on that in a minute the spacing is different so it won't fit so this white plug here is for uh, an SRXL2 connector and you can plug in a little remote receiver so that you can do wireless buddy boxing the DXS would be the master or the trainer and then you would the other student transmitter would bind to that uh, we're not going to use that one. This other connector here is for the USB programmer. So these four pins here are where you're going to connect. Now you just need to use the two end pins. So this top pin here is the ground. The second pin down is the voltage plus. I think it's five volts. Third one down is the transmit and the bottom one is receive. So you just need to go to the ground and the receive pins in order to connect that into the USB. Uh, we don't need the voltage pin on this. We just need the signal and the ground. So hopefully you can see that there. I've just, uh, by having those on individual pins, uh, I've got the ground pin or the black hooked to the top one and the, uh, the signal pin hooked up to the bottom. Uh, here's another example of a, of a jumper wire you could use. These are for the little breadboards that a lot of us use to, uh, if you're in electronics at all. Once you get that connected, then you just make sure make sure your polarity is right. It won't hurt anything if you get it off, but the you know get the black one to the to the ground and the white one or whatever color you will use. I just happen to use this black and white because that's what I had. But so plugging that in, that'll let us plug in the radio to the uh, to the computer. Now one thing they uh, talked about in their literature and in the video is if you have on the side of the battery compartment here, uh, what I read was that if your serial number down here this code uh, starts with SHTK then you most likely need to update your firmware. Uh, I plugged it into the computer and even though I have that and it had already been updated so at some point um, 
you know, the vendor or, or Horizon Hobby or somebody actually updated this radio, so it was already had the 1.3 firmware on it. So one of the ways you're going to know if you have the update or not is if you push this the throttle trim up and the elevator trim down while you power it up, hold those, power it on, you'll get that little melody. You get a you know different color of light, depends on if you're on airplane or helicopter mode, but uh, um, that first LED means you're on uh, model profile one. If I push this trim switch up, now I've switched to profile two. That's the one you'd use if you had a plane that had flaps, but it, it rearranges the channels, the seven channels you use. And then these other two are for uh, just uh, wing type planes that have the uh, mix of the aileron and elevator to, to your flying. That's what both of these are. It just changes around that mix a little bit. And then you go pull it down and you can go back to the other two. Now this other button, if I pull this down, it'll switch to a helicopter. There's a single helicopter mode. Just the one. But when it's uh, the turquoise color or blue or whatever that is, um, those are the airplane modes. So your stock like Aeroscout is going to use model profile one that has the default channel five right here for safe modes and the, uh, the button here is for uh, channel six which is your panic mode and in profile uh, uh, number one this uh, D switch is uh, is tied to channel seven but you know most of your planes like uh, Aeroscout or something's not going to have anything assigned to channel seven. Uh, if you switch to profile number two, uh, it moves the channels so that the push button is now channel seven. The B switch is now your, it's still channel five. So in, in all modes, this is channel five, just so you know. And then this channel, or this switch, switches to channel six when you're in profile number two. Uh, and of course, this is still your high and low rates. This is high rates, this is low rates, and then you got throttle cut here. So that's throttle enabled, that's throttle cut. So real quick, I'll plug it into the computer and just uh, show you what it looks like when you plug into the Spectrum Programmer. So you have your uh, radio turned off, plug in the USB. All right, so here we are in the Spectrum Programmer software. Uh, I'm going to just power up the radio, and it should automatically connect. So let's turn this on. As you can see, it automatically uh, connected, and it says uh, checking for uh, updates, and it says no new software is available at this time. Uh, if I hadn't already registered this, it would have uh, asked me to register the, the radio uh, before it would let me do that. So I've got 1.3 on here already, so that's all I need. Once you have that, then you can do that uh, model profile setup. So it's really easy to make your own cable. No reason to uh, you know wait for a back order to clear or just get some jumper wires and hook that up. Fortunately, you do need the USB programmer. You're not going to be able to get your way around that. I know people have made their own, but uh, I don't know if that's worth it. Just just get, pick one of those up. If you're going to be in the Spectrum world for long, you're going to need that. So uh, keep an eye out for uh, more videos. I'm probably going to do a couple more on uh, on this radio just to just show you how the channels reconfigure when you uh, go to the different modes. And uh, perhaps we'll do some modifications to it or some hacks. Uh, thanks again for Tim at uh, Midwest RC for... Uh, hooking me up with this radio so I can uh, check it out and do some content with it. Hopefully it'll help you out. Thanks for watching.